A very good evening to you. Welcome to a brand new season of Man Up. This is the corner where men sit and we have conversations that uh, enrich us as men, handling situations that we face and coming up with solutions to some of the problems we are facing in this generation as men. This premiere episode is going to be the blast. Why? Because we're going to talk about something that is affecting men in this generation, both young and old, because it's become so easy to engage in it. On this premiere episode, we talk about gambling addiction and its effect on the family. And I was thinking earlier when I was growing up, the only form of gambling I knew was uh, Kenya, Kenya Charity Swift Stick. There are yellow boots in town. That is all I knew. But today, gambling has become such a big problem. And I think Kenya has one of the highest numbers in Africa when it comes to gambling. I think there was a research that was done by Geopol in 2021, and 84% of our young people are engaging in gambling. A third of them uh, probably addicted. So the numbers are way up there. We keep talking about the boy child and, you know, educating the boy child and enriching and equipping the boy child. Well, this is one area we have quite some work to do. Now, on this premiere episode, I have some gentlemen who are forming our live audience. Wanaomemko. Great. I have four guests on the show this evening. I'll introduce two of them. And then the other two will get to know them later on in the show. First and foremost, we have the director of Responsible Gaming Federation of Kenya, Weldon Koros. Weldon, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Karibu sana. Asante. I, when I saw your name, I felt like saying, well done, good and faithful servant. <laughs> Enter into the house of the Lord. It's good to have you. Karibu thank sana. You. Asante, I appreciate we, it. We also have my namesake, Martin Karanja. Martin, how are you doing? I'm very fine. Karibu sana. Thank you. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you. I think I'll begin with you, Weldon. When we talk about gambling, how would you define gambling? Uh, gambling is a game of chance. So basically, in gambling, no one knows the outcome. So if anyone knows the outcome, that is not gambling. So as per the definition of gambling, it's a game of chance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Why, yeah. Why do you think there has been such an escalation with uh, gambling addiction, especially in Kenya today? Uh, first, I'd like to clarify something you pointed out. Yeah. Kenya has the highest level of addiction in the world. What? Not in Africa? 84% 80, has never been. The UK is at 56, something like that. Uh -huh. And the UK was the highest before gambling, had, gambling came to Africa. Uh -huh. So what we have in Kenya has never been witnessed anywhere else in, in, in the world. In Kenya is that the, the issues of M-Pesa has escalated the issue uh -huh. since transactions are done in under two oh, minutes. Yeah. In the UK, people bet using cards. Okay. A card takes 12 hours to clear. Mm -hmm. So there is that breathing space. Mm. Here you can gamble in under 30 minutes. What? So the rate of addiction is the highest in the world. So it has actually caught the attention of some organizations such as the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. some international uh, stakeholders mm -hmm. at a very high level. What makes it worse is the high rate of poverty. Mm -hmm. mm, another factor is uh, some systems in Africa have collapsed. Mm -hmm. Some government support systems. Yes, yes are no longer there. Mm -hmm. People gave up on those systems. Okay. So you are basically on your own. Wow. Yeah. I'm very curious, Martin. Yes. How you got into gambling? What what drove you there? I was introduced by a friend who had won a lot in gambling. A lot of money? Yeah, he had won a lot more than fifty thousand. Okay. So yeah. what did he tell you? Who did you hey, boss? Actually uh. it kwa alikuwa na cheza na hundred bob mm -hmm. na that hundred bob alikuwa anaweza kupata 50 to 60000 okay that is per 24 hours so when you tried for the first time did you did you win something no in fact the first two weeks we, uh, i never won anything so after i remember it was on friday mm -hmm. we a monte bet of 15 games mm -hmm. ni kapata 34300 something my addiction in Yanza. Oh, <laughs> when you won is when the addiction started. Yeah, because I increased the stake from um, uh, from fifty 
and Nikaida Mpaka 500. And within two weeks, I remember all that money, all the thousand that I won. I only bought a pair of shoes equivalent to 350. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You won how much? Uh, 34,500 something, yeah. And within two weeks, all of it had gone? Yeah, I remember I bought a shoe of 350. I bargained also. <laughs> <laughs> so are you saying it's that quick to be addicted? Yeah, there are many factors uh -huh. as, to, as to why someone gets addicted. Uh -huh. Probably, I think the reason why he lost the 34,000 was that he recycled back to the gambling companies. <laughs> so back into the business. Who took the all of it. <laughs> but it's interesting because the, the several people I've talked to who had an addiction problem with gambling, they share the same thing. That their first winnings, they upped their stakes and everything went, went back. So when that happens, what do you do? Do you now look for more money? Yeah. Why? Because they have already given you high. So what you do, you increase the stake, uh, because you can imagine per 50 I had on, that is something. So I increase the stake up to 500. Now I'm expecting 200 and something, mm -hmm. 200,000 and something. So that will never happen, because you can go even a year. In fact, the whole of uh, 2017, mm -hmm. I never won anything. But you were betting? I was betting regularly. You see... Uh, regularly is how often? Every week? Not every week. Ah. Like, any time you get 50 bob in your M-Pesa, you ah. just bet. Like, if you are employed, you just pay the rent and the food. The rest, you, you grab everything. Wow. Yeah, because they had already shown you, you can win that amount, that a lot. So at, at what point did you look at yourself and think, this is a problem? Uh, it was back in 2021. Uh -huh. That's when I checked my MPSA statement. What did you see? Uh, a lot of figures. Actually, uh, like a month, I had transacted over 150,000. What? I did see my salary by then was, was around 18,000. So you can imagine the rest of the money I was borrowing from family, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Faking even my sister is dead, so I can gabble. I'm very curious, well done. Is this, as you try and, and, and create awareness and talk to people, is this something you see a lot? Yes, it's, it's a common thing. Uh -huh. It's known as uh, chasing losses where there is a false perception that the rules of probability works with gambling, you will find someone saying, mm -hmm. because they think that they were really near to winning. Mm -hmm. So they think their next bet will close that one loss, yeah. which is wrong. It's, 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 it's a false fallacy. Wow. How did this affect your life? First of all, familiar we talked. Oh. Yeah, I had a family. Uh -huh. So I could not pay the bill anymore. Rent and, and, other, bi and other things. And everything. Mm -hmm. So from, uh, the first thing, family mm -hmm. That is my wife and my one kid. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, cousin is my mission. Why? Because I was in the everybody. Oh. Everybody. Hata I was in the house, I was in the Everyone was in the house. Na yote betting. Yote betting. Kinipatia 50, kuliko kuninue chakura na gabo yote. Mm -hmm. Ata nikieda church study na ya sadaka naeda na bet bado. <laughs> what? Yeah. Did you ever think you would find yourself in that position? No. Because hiyo kitu ni kama ugojwa. Uh-huh. Wezi jikontrol. Arafu huna mtu wakuogea. Because unapata society saizi. How I really gabble in addiction with the same na kama ya pobe. When I say this, you can control yourself. Yeah. What else you wezi? Wow. I, 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 I've never had a story like this. I've had people tell me about their issues with gambling, but not to that degree. How serious is this problem? Among, and, and what age groups would you say are mostly affected? Uh, the issue is serious. Mm. I'll take the context of him because I could identify several issues. Okay. One, like uh, he used to gamble, it affected his work. Yeah. It affected his family. Mm -hmm. Yes. So in terms of addressing the same, like uh, I think uh, first we need to look how, how can you manage gambling addiction at work, mm -hmm. at the workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, as an employer, is there a risk that your accountant could be gambling with petty cash? Ah. Yeah, because that's the same thing we are, we are getting yeah. from him. Yeah. 
Because when you look at the workplace, we have a uh, drug and alcohol abuse policies yes. within the workplace. Yes. Can we copy paste the same policies and we have a, a gambling policy within the workplace mm -hmm. such that uh, we can say that uh, in the workplace you cannot gamble with facilities mm -hmm. provided for purposes of work. Mm -hmm. In as much as you are an adult, mm -hmm. use your own bundles. Don't use the workplace Wi-Fi yes. to, to, to gamble. Mm -hmm. Understand? Yeah. Now, at the family level now, for him now and, and, and his family, there are ways in which, uh, at a family setting, mm -hmm. we can manage gambling addiction, okay. such that ensuring that if you are providing your kids with tablets to read, mm -hmm. make sure those apps are blocked. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious from our studio audience uh, this evening, listening to Martin's story, I, I don't know if there's any questions that come to mind, because it, it sounds kind of extreme. Well, my question goes uh, to you, Martin. My name is uh, Justice Muguria, and I wanted to ask, how old were you when you began gambling? Okay, I started gambling at the age of 19, when I left the Pompo. Wow. At the time you were starting, it didn't seem like much of a big deal. No. And I think that's the problem we're having, especially with this generation. You know, you talked about talking to people in college, you know, where... Mostly it's your parents who are financing your education and uh, unknowingly they may be financing this habit. But now you may assume that once you leave that stage of life and you start a job and you get married and you settle down with a family, that this will not affect. But from Martin's story, that was the genesis of something he never thought would go, would go that far. So at what point did you reach out for help? When everything was gone, my work was gone, my uh -huh. family was gone, uh, my house was closed, mm -hmm. so I had to, uh, to stop gabbering the hard way. Mm. And I could not even pay my rehab. What happens to people who don't get help? How we handle uh, addiction mm -hmm. on, on, on gambling is that uh, you use a multi-layered a multi approach. Okay. Because you realize for him, in as much as a gambling company blocked his account, yeah. he could still access casinos. Yes. So unless you have a, a multi-layered way of handling this issue, mm -hmm. th there can be a loophole somewhere yeah. for someone to, 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 to get out. Technically, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. You can't achieve 100%, but you can achieve 70%. Okay. If you block him at work, have his account closed, tell casinos if you see this face, yes. don't accept, don't accept him. him. <laughs> wow. Poverty will make him also not gamble because he doesn't have money, money yes. unless he resorts to stealing, which most of them do. Oh. So it's, it's people, people steal, especially at the workplace, yeah. to be able to facilitate their, their, addiction. their, their, prob yeah, yeah. their addiction. Also, there are issues of funding yeah. that needs to be channeled into churches mm -hmm. to enable them to sustain this, this initiative. In fact, the church is the correct place for this to for this to to happen okay. it's the perfect place okay yeah it's only the issues of funding mm. and the and the support that is like the resources that the church need in as much as they can volunteer mm. how long will they volunteer yeah yeah so yeah. then there is a resource aspect okay. that needs to be channeled into the religious institutions okay yeah. you're watching man up tonight we are talking about uh, gambling addiction and its effect on the family. We are taking a short break, but when we come back, I'll introduce two more guests into this conversation. There's something we call cross addiction, where one addiction leads you into another addiction. We'll talk a bit about that and also get to understand what happens in the mind of somebody who is addicted. Because if you're not addicted, you're thinking, si uwache tu, mbona uwache, why can't you just stop? But there's something that's going on in the mind of somebody who is addicted. We need to find out what that is. I have a question for you as we take a short break. Do you think enough is being done to create awareness on gambling addiction? Send me your answer to that on 20316 for SMS and WhatsApp 0786 316 316. Kama kawaida, one minute break. Kimbia Jikoni, Kunyo Maji, come back for part two as we continue with this discussion. Tomorrow on This Is My Story, his diagnosis opened a can of worms, bringing collateral damage to the family. And the reason why she's gone 
it is only because of knowing I have cancer. Even though he is walking through the valley of the shadow of death, he is not dismayed. I'm always so much humbled when many people tell me, I've decided to get saved because of you, the way you are ministering God in the situation you are in. Find out more on This Is My Story tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Welcome back to Man Up. Tonight we are looking at uh, addiction, gambling addiction and how it affects the family. As I told you earlier on, I have four guests. We've already talked to two. I have two I will introduce to you in a short while. But during the break, an interesting question came up and I think it's important for us to address that question. So I'll ask one of the audience members to ask the question that he had during the break. Uh, thank you. My name is Victor Gashika. And uh, my question goes out to Martin. Uh, during the time he was gambling, since he started uh, at the age of 19, up to the time he was getting married, up to the time he had the divorce, how was he justifying the, the gambling activity to the family and to the friends who are being affected by it? Now, when I started betting, uh, training try was everything that I had to do. So nobody knew I was betting because I could do it very secretly. Hakuna mwenye gejua nilikuwa na bet. Sababu nilikuwa na jificha sana. And the moment I realized nilikuwa na bet, it was too late. Nilikuwa niko exhausted kabisa. Kudaganyana na yoyo siyo. Haikuwa kitu gumu. Na nobody knew. How then do you justify that? Because it involves money. Yeah. And this is money for upkeep in the home, paying rent, paying electricity. Mm -hmm. And so if you've betted that money away, how do you explain that to your wife? At a time, you have to lie. What? You have to lie. You have to And sometimes you even lie, you may be one. Oh. Yeah. You may be 10K, and you have to lie. So at what point did your wife discover? Uh, yeah. At what point did your wife discover? I discovered that I didn't want to get my wife to get Oh. I got my wife to get my wife. Everything? Yeah, I got my wife to get my wife. I got my wife to get my wife. And it was within, I think, six hours. I got my wife to get my wife to get my wife. So... Wow. I got my wife the last time. Well done. Do you have anything to say to that? <laughs> For me, that is too shocking. <laughs> Do you see a lot of that? That extreme? It's, it's a common thing within uh, the gambling industry. So as long as uh, there are no safety measures, there are no education on the public, you will expect such, such a thing. Okay. The same case with the drug and alcohol abuse. Mm -hmm. If there are no initiatives behind uh, behind them, it wouldn't be surprising to okay. to hear such 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 sad stories. So wow. the only way we can we can win the war against the gambling addiction is through such like programs mm -hmm. and education and awareness outside okay. there. Okay. Yeah. So in this second half of the show, we want to engage. Uh, Professor Geoffrey Wango. Professor is a professor in counseling psychology, Department of Psychology at the University of Nairobi. Asante. Sana, professor. Asante sana. Good to have you on the show. Asante sana, Alfred James. Yes. Yes. Also with us this evening, we have Peter Maderi Kaira. Peter is a recovering alcoholic, now working in a rehab, majoring on addictions counseling. Peter, karibu sana. It's good to have you. I have to ask <laughs> you this question, because okay. listening to what Martin is saying, one yes. of the things that... I'm wondering is mm. what is going on in the mind in his mind at that point mm. where he even sells everything mm. and gambles all that money away what is happening in his mind for you to bring in someone to be addicted into alcohol uh -huh. and drugs and uh, addiction and other addictions including pornography and uh -huh. gambling yeah you must bring a soft target who is a soft target mm -hmm. form for last year we had one student who had done um, 45000 Betting. Betting. And, and it was, he, he, he was washed clean. Oh, my God. He had no money. Yeah. And, and now, there's a part he's, he has not had that we had with him. 
it's called suicide at the end. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So, so the sources of the money, the the salary, salary mm -hmm. the help, the help, mm -hmm. the internet, free internet. I like the way he put it. Uh -huh. Free internet, even free internet in the home. Yeah. Then there is selling of family goods. Yes. Yes. That's why you start noticing the selling of family goods. Yes. Then, then there are others, the family and relatives. Borrowing. Then the borrowing. Then there are the loans. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then there are the normal loans and the, the Shyrock. If yeah. you remember, he talks about his things being carried. Yes. The Shyrocks. Yes. One of the reasons why I'm very interested with what you're saying is something that I have to say, and it's very tragic. After you have done all this, mm -hmm. you literally are left clean. With nothing. With nothing. I like, I like the, our gentleman here asked a question. How does 18 move to 150? Mm -hmm. uh, last year, I had a, a case I was handling of a man who had moved to 700,000. What? Yeah. Gambling. Gambling, and he was employed. This year, I have a case of a person who has stopped working. In fact, he has stopped working. He has a debt of half a million. So he wow. has stopped working. Because the debts are not equivalent to the salary. Yes. That one, we are lucky he's alive. I don't, I don't want to tell you what happened to the other one. How was your situation? Because one led to another. Yes. So what were you addicted to first? Was it alcohol so, or was it gambling? Okay. We normally talk of uh, the addiction of choice. Uh -huh. mm. uh -huh. And my drug of choice was alcohol. Mm -hmm. And now it brought about gambling. Uh -huh. So this is where you normally talk of close addiction. Okay. Uh -huh. Because here you are, mm. you are into alcohol. Mm sustaining that kind of lifestyle mm -hmm. it is very expensive mm -hmm. so what do you do mm -hmm. the few cents that you have mm -hmm. you go and gobble mm -hmm. and when you talk of gambling we don't only talk about the betting sites online mm -hmm. gambling depends on where you are okay. because there are people who normally access casinos yeah. The others who cannot access casinos. Yeah. So all normally happens, you find that like at this hour of the day, you'll find that there are so many people who are in pool tables, mm -hmm. others are doing darts, others are doing the cards, the poker. Yeah. So it, it depends on where you are. Mm -hmm. And so because you want to multiply, let mm -hmm. me say so, you want mm -hmm. to multiply the few cents that you have mm -hmm. so that you can increase your alcohol supply. So what do you do? You find yourself gambling. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, because you do a lot of counseling and you work with addicts, specifically gambling, paint a picture for us mm. of how it gets from being experimental into a habit, into an obsession. Yeah. <clears throat> now, there are always the red flags. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I may start off on something, mm. and then I am able to control, mm. as in, I am not powerless over it. Mm -hmm. I can be able to manage mm -hmm. how I do it. Mm -hmm. But now, the moment I find myself losing control, mm -hmm. as in the time that is normally to be dedicated for useful things and beneficial things, mm -hmm. I'm dedicating it to whatever I'm doing. The resources mm -hmm. that are supposed to be dedicated to useful things, I'm dedicating it to um, facilitate yeah. whatever I am doing. Yeah. That is the very first red flag. Mm -hmm. Then you find yourself losing interest mm. in other things. Mm. Like we have people who have uh, like very healthy hobbies, mm. like reading, mm -hmm. exercising, mm. name them. Mm. You find that you have lost interest in your hobby. Uh -huh. The interest is only into this habit that you took. Then you find yourself concealing Mm. whatever you are doing. Mm. So the moment you find yourself that whatever you are doing, you are doing it secretively, yeah. you should ask yourself why, if it is in order. Yeah. Why, why should I... Why am I hiding? Why, why am I hiding? Yes. Why should I lie? Mm. Because there are also a lot of lies. Yeah. Mm. Anytime I'm going somewhere, yeah. I don't disclose where mm. I'm going. Mm -hmm. I don't disclose even my friends, the ones I'm going out with. Mm. That's yet another red flag. Mm. But now... You know, something done repeatedly, like you are lying. Mm. Now, you know, and it can happen. there's something that is not adding up. Mm -hmm. So, even before you come to realize, several meetings, family, several family meetings have been held. Mm -hmm. Several friends mm. have been sent mm. to come and intervene. Mm. 
but what you normally say that does not help mm -hmm. it will only help when you yourself come to realize that there is a problem, a problem and you take it as something that is true because in this phase where everybody was knowing about it mm -hmm. when you are ignorant about it mm -hmm. you are in denial yeah mm -hmm. and now when you come to break denial over this dependence mm -hmm. so that is the only time that you can walk out of it mm -hmm. and at the times mm -hmm. unwittingly mm -hmm. they find themselves enabling, enabling you. this habit yes. and that is where now we come and rebel addiction as a family disease mm -hmm. ah. mm -hmm. because everybody who comes into a line of life yeah. gets affected in one way or, or another. the other yeah yeah okay so Okay, I'm I'm curious, uh, <laughs> Professor. Yes. <laughs> for the for the men who are watching this show, yes. the families that are watching this mm. show, mm. and they can so identify with what we are talking about because mm. it's happening in their home. Is there hope? I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I was waiting for you to add individuals watching. <laughs> because he said, you must lift up your heart. And yes. Yes, you must lift up your heart and say, and tell, come and let tell Reverend James, I forget to pray every morning. Mm. Mm. I like that, even individuals. The first is the science you are talking about. Mm -hmm. Are you, uh, he keeps saying, uh, addiction is very costly. Yeah. He has said that now three times. Mm -hmm. Addiction costs the social environment. You don't take your children to school. Mm. It starts very simple. Even the church notices you no longer go to church. Mm -hmm. Referred with due respect, you notice someone no longer tithes. Yes. <laughs> so mm. this is uh, the science. So even as a referred. So but also for the person, when you are telling you you have a problem, by the way, I don't have a problem. We need, yes, we need to tell people, excuse me, listen to us. Mm. Do your mathematics. Then the worst is when the debts start piling. Mm. Hey, I, I was waiting for you to tell you to give the example you were telling you during the break. Mm -hmm. At Mutu and Ajipika Geta. Yeah, it oh, happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. who tell us that one? I thought <laughs> that, <laughs> that one was. It, it, it what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it happens. Mm. So, you know, addiction brings about defects of character. Mm -hmm. And these defects of character can lead you to do anything. And when we talk of like lobbying yourself, mm. it's very simple. You had money. <laughs> yeah. You had money. Yes. The money is gone. Mm. How do you explain mm -hmm. how the money, where the money went? Yes. <laughs> so this is where now you rob yourself. <laughs> right now, if I, 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 if I tear the, the pocket of my shirt, yes. if I t t tear out the buttons, yes. if I tear my trouser, mm. and then once I get home, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was dying. Eh? The very, the, the first thing eh. that you will do, yes. you first of, you feel for me. You yes. feel sorry. Well, I'm sorry. grateful you are alive. Have so. you been injured? Yes. No, ni mm. mm. So, mm. have I not sent a message home? Mm. You don't expect me to have any money. Ah, yeah. Okay. Mm. So that is one. Mm -hmm. There are people who even arrest themselves. <laughs> Yeah. What? <laughs> COVID. Yes. So many people arrested themselves in the name of face masks. Uh -huh. yes. Why? Uh -huh. Sina pesa. Mm. I need money. So what do I do? Mm -hmm. And there is always mm. the one who has been a target. Mm -hmm. So many Najua, mm. if I happen to call Pasi, mm. he's going to sort me. Yeah. Mm. If I happen to call Prof, mm. he's going to sort me. Yeah. Mm. So Uwaga Unapata, there is always that first contact person. Mm? Before we run out of time, I want to throw this back to our studio audience. Give you an opportunity if you have a question or two that you can ask uh, before we wrap it up. And also, I would want uh, uh, one of our guests also give us what, what, what's the way forward? Mm. Because this is what you do. You talk to people, you educate them about this. What's the way forward for those who are in this problem? Can they reach out? If they can reach out, how do they reach out? We know that gambling cuts across. Mm. And, and, and we have also Christians, mm. born again Christians, mm. who are gambling. Mm. And they know the word of God. And I like what you have said that 
we, we don't have you know blame game mm. and, and you can't say that you're the cause and I'm the cause. Mm. Could it be that we are ignoring a certain truth where the scripture says that the love of money mm. becomes the root mm. of mm. all evil? Mm. Could it be that we are ignoring that truth? Could it be to na funika, to na, mm. to na assume hatuoni? Mm-hmm. trying mm. to satisfy mm. a desire mm. or some sort of greed mm. in us and how can we deal with that truth we must tell people to be responsible, responsible for their actions yes mm-hmm. number one mm. and then we remove away from the brain game mm. we go back mm. now that you know you must be responsible mm. how do you use your money Mm. That's where the referent now becomes saying mm. with the programs that he was saying, mm. even talking to people about managing your finances, yeah. you know, managing uh, your life, mm. what are your priorities in life, yes. programs like this so that people can, we can Indeed. show them something different mm. from Gabriel. Okay. Gentlemen, I have to shut it down. Thank you so much for coming and thank you for sharing candidly yeah. uh, your experiences and what you've learned along the way. Asante Nisana. Mm-hmm. Aya, wanaume, umesikia? <laughs> from, from, uh, from the experiences that we've had, especially from Martin's experience, mm-hmm. you know, you may think that it's not a problem, but it grows. And before you know it, you're all alone with nothing to show for your life. And so I pray that this, if this is the route you've begun taking, Martin started at 19, and it affected him, Nahapombele, after he was married. So if you're a young person watching this show and you are getting into gambling, think twice. It's not the route to go. Until next week for another episode of Man Up, thank you so much for watching. God bless you.